From the window of the cabin, a derelict castle could be seen sat atop a cliff with no visible approach. The dense forest surrounding the structure seemed to cover the dreadfully silent valley. The cabin was old and long abandoned with little evidence of prior occupancy save for fresh firewood in the hearth and oven. As Val Phelan prepared the hearth, Yolanthe heard a noise from outside and began barking at the front-facing window. Meanwhile, a drow crept inside through another window in the rear bedroom, realizing these to be the first humanoids he had seen in years. Talaneth decided to announce himself to the adventurers by throwing a dagger into a nearby wall. While arousing the team's suspicions, the heroes stowed their weapons and instead shared stories and a meal with their new acquaintance. It seemed that their paths aligned here. Talaneth also sought his way to the derelict castle, believing that he might find information about his long-lost brother therein. Sympathizing with his tale, the adventurers decided to travel with this new companion and somehow find their way out of this horrid plane of mirrors. Welcome back to New Delancia, our Dungeons & Dragons homebrew campaign. I'm your most gracious DM. Val Phelan. <laughs> BG <episode> Pums. <laughs> Welcome in, everybody. I know it's been a few months, and um, wow, there's a lot going on. Uh, but uh, you know, we we've had a, a few people who have called out for this session, and uh, and uh, yeah, we're kind of rolling with that. There have been some uh, some updates in the background of everything, and some stuff that we've had to work through. But we are finally back, and I am very, very glad to say it. I hope everybody is having a great day, because I am having a wonderful day. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get started. I feel like this might be a little bit appropriate mood setting for the day, so... That might have been a little loud, and if it, if it was, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. So, can I, can I throw, oh, uh, ooh. yes, I can. So, Tess, Miskew, Ian Fear, as you awaken, you do so to a very strange um, and yet familiar scene of the top of a wagon. You feel as though the, the things that you remember from recent past, um, the interior of the cabin following Scriteau through the plane of mirrors, um, even... Uh, even going to battle with your mirrored selves seems almost like a dream at this point. I'm sorry, we're in the back of a wagon? Yes. Okay. As you wake up, you look up at the ceiling, and it's clearly the back of a wagon. You hear the <coughs> of horses. Um, you look around, and Ahara is there sleeping. Um Valphalen kind of sits up and looks around and a um a uh, red robed figure um sitting next to him, arms outstretched, and another dwarf who looks over and goes They've awakened The heroes of Banaver, they've awakened and hops from the back of the wagon and you hear, you know, kind of muffled, They've awakened, they've awakened in the in the background is as the, uh, I fear your voice is very muddled right now. Sorry, I'll go. Yes, uh, finally, we're awake. The air for a moment is filled with the plopping of, of horses that are just like scrambling to a halt. And as you, uh, as you 
lean up from your laying down positions, each of you covered in sweat. You recognize these surroundings as the same environment that you woke up in after your jaunt to the future time. Let me go ahead and stop the music right here. A little bit too lively for this, right? Now it's just the silence of sheer panic. Now Tess at this point, she's um, sitting up in the back of this wagon and she's kind of looking around like obviously really confused. Hmm. Valphalen as well um, seems to look a bit confused. Tess is going to, um, after rubbing both of her eyes, she's going to shake her head and kind of uh, not fully stand up, but kind of like crouch or like crawl around. Um, to check to see if she can find a uh, wreck, wreck bloodstone. Not present. Because the last time we were on a wagon, wreck was with us and he was, uh, he was helping hunt. So after noticing that wreck is not there, she's going to scan the area and look for Yolanthe. Not present. So at this point, Tess is gonna Tess is gonna sit back and kind of scratch her head and say, "That must have been some dream." So, no sooner do you say that than Antarius pokes his head into the wagon. You're awake. Are you not supposed to be on the ship? For a moment, he he looks puzzled, and then he his skin kind of flushes, or um, or not flushes, but the the opposite of that, it, it pales, and he goes, he kind of looks over to the uh, the dwarf, leave us, almost in a panic, and says, uh, as soon as the uh, dwarf hops out of the tent, he says, I um. I take it that wasn't just a dream. Okay, good, because Tess thought that Tess was crazy for a moment there. Yeah. Were we not just adventuring with Wreck in the Mirror Realm with, with Tal? Misku? Misku, are you awake? Were, were we not just seeing... Another set of us? Were we not just... This... Hmm. This is very curious. At this point, um, the robed figure um, standing next to you removes the hood of his robe. I thought I was the only one. Clearly, this is Healthius, who is... Um, who is sitting next to you, and um, he was, once again, as you, uh, as you had uh, recall, when you would come back from the future realm, Healthius was there tending to you and, um, you know, trying to do his best with the uh, rest of the healers to discern what was going on. Um, a question. Do you have the, the small metallic orbs on your person that were brought back from the future realm. Uh, I will check through my pockets because I normally would have uh, if, if mm. it had been from the previous time. Valphalen kind of scrambles uh, through his, or, or kind of you know, feels around through his pockets and stuff, and indeed, yes, pulls out a an orb and um, presents it to Healthius. While checking through, is also going to see if he can find the pocket mirror. Not present. That's, ooh. We're in a covered wagon, correct? That's correct. 
so uh, at Tess's uh, call out to Misku, Misku's gonna hold a finger up and uh, very carefully peek out the back of the wagon to survey where exactly they are. Peeking out the wagon, you see a trail um, as well as uh, woods on either side. It appears that you are actually in that very sp- that very same spot at which you woke up right after having that um, that lapse in which you had went to the future and come back. So uh, well, this went is to the, on... went to the other plane rather. So this is on the trail to the ruins, then. That's correct. On the on the trail to Dentherum. Hmm. Healthius reaches out. Um, I believe there was one more. And uh, Valphalen uh, reaches into a sleeping Ahara's pocket, pulls out the final orb and hands it to Healthius, who um, places them into the palm of his hand and then looks up at you, Test. His eyes sort of glow. And he says, oh, well, you hear a very, very familiar voice in your head. And it says, Ted. I must admit, you've performed perfectly. Didn't ever miss a step a perfect puff you heard me though yeah oh. i did i did hear <laughs> you, you. <laughs> yes i was just letting you know we need to you need to up the volume a little bit on that um, so you are the only person that's heard that and as that is happening, uh, the rest of you, what you see is the orbs fly from health, uh, from Healthius's hands. They begin to swirl around him violently. Um, they start to puncture holes in the wood and, and the, uh, and the canopy of the, um, of the, uh, wagon. And before you are able to take any action, um, he says, Sembathos, Kalakos, Uragos. And he is gone. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> I like that. Hmm. And Terius, like, absolutely flabbergasted, looks over and... Th- that's um, not how that happened. I, I don't think I understand. And Valphalen, I am equally as... Puzzled as you, my friend. Tess is going to, um, she's kind of in a shock at this point because it's been a while since she heard the voice, so she thought she was over it. Um, she's going to place both of her palms on each side of her head and just kind of shake her head and say, no, 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 no. This must be a dream. Roll a constitution check, please. Let me find where that is. It's been a while. I'm rusty. Constitution. Save. 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 Constitution. Save. Oh, Ooh, natural 20. Ooh, first roll of the year, baby. Let's go. Suddenly, your head is absolutely doused with pain. You are almost on your knees, crumpled over, but you immediately stand up perfectly straight and grab either side of your head to hear the following. Tess, after months of silence, I am finally free. Our time here is short, and you must hurry to an obelisk that is near where you are now. I will channel to you a vision that will guide you. Enter therein and invoke the pool of scrying there, and I will contact you once more. And no sooner does that voice stop than you are flooded with this like imagery of getting out of the wagon, 
looking over to the uh, to your right, and there is like this forest, this wall of forest. There, you make your way through the trees, and very very quickly, um, these trees kind of pass you by until you find yourself at the at the base and the door of an obelisk that looks very familiar. The vision stops there, and you are released. So, so back by to your own. getting out of the wagon, like we are getting out of the wagon now, like right now. Nope, that's the thing that you just saw in your head. Okay. Tess is going to turn around and look at everybody with the most apologetic stare and say, Tess knows this happens quite a lot, but Tess really needs your trust right now. We need to find an obelisk quite near this area. If you could help Tess find that, Tess would be most appreciative. The last time we found an obelisk around this area, I... Hmm. And he... Valphalen starts to, like, scramble through his things. Interesting. I do not have my spear. It is as though we've already re visited the obelisk. Interesting. Valphalen kind of looks confused by the whole thing. Misku's going to look around for her club. It's there. Uh, she sighs a heavy sigh of relief. My sword and shield, however, I have it. I should not have it at this point. Tess at this point does not have all the answers. Tess's biggest apologies. However, that voice that Tess have talked about before says that there's something we have to do here. And you're sure we can trust it? Tess has been following this voice her entire life. It has never really led Tess wrong. It did lead her to you, to you guys. That is fair. In this vision that she had, this obelisk, was it, like, large enough to, like, peek over, like, the trees? Mm, somewhat. Okay, I guess she's going to uh, move toward the back of the cabin and, like, look around to see if she can recognize anything from that vision. As soon as you kind of open the drape for the cabin, um, looking around, you immediately recognize the line of trees that you see off to the right. So okay. this is, like, the very first piece of your vision that you were given, and you have a very vivid memory of it. But this is the exact set of trees that, that you all walked into. Okay, she is going to uh, yell outside to. We there, there were multiple uh, wagons that were following us, right? Like it was like a caravan kind of setup. That's right. Okay, so a caravan. Oh, sorry. She's gonna sorry. she's gonna lean out the back and say, "The heroes of Bunavar need to stop." The the wagons are already stopped. Yes, yeah, okay, they, they I stopped thought, earlier. I thought we were still moving, my bad. Okay. Well, Tess is going to um, collect her things, her staff, her bag, and uh, leave the wagon and start walking toward the forest. <laughs> it's almost like it's a automatic response. Like, she's not going to turn around and check to make sure everyone's ready. She's just going to go. Uh, Tess, wait. I need some time to don my... Val kind of says embarrassingly. <laughs> uh, she turns around and, oh, sorry about that. Tess is fine going by herself, but if you would like to come, Tess would be most appreciative. Climbing down from the back of the wagon, um, Antarius says to you, I'm not really sure what I should be doing. Um, Antarius, the best course of action here is to just stay here with everybody and make sure the caravan is safe. 
he um he looks a little shocked at first, but then this is what you do. It's natural for you. Thinking about it for a little while, he says, "You're probably right." Be careful. Well, she grins like ear to ear, and and she's like, "Just knew it." Sorry, Ian. Here, go ahead. Well, uh, well, knowing the trouble you tend to get yourself into, I'll stick by you just because you're probably going to need some way to get out of it. Tess can always count on you, Infier. Valphalen sort of strapping on all of his armor as quickly as he possibly can. Um, it does take a little bit of time to don armor, though. Misko hops out of the back of the wagon and starts getting a big old stretch. Uh... Here we go again. Thank you, Miss Q. Do you... Oh, he's kind of like sliding armor over his arms. Uh, do you think this is the same mm, obelisk? Uh. Quite possibly so. Uh, does anyone remember? Uh, there was a... Mm, there was a puzzle at the door, I believe. Yes, we needed to uh, uh, to be honorable uh, in our intentions in order to enter. I... Hmm. That covers everyone here except Misku. <laughs> I think it... W if I remember, uh, I think... He ended up having to uh, perform a simple uh, bow or curtsy uh, in front of our reflection. Oh, now Tess remembers. That makes more sense. Obviously, hearkening to your criminal history, Misku. Misku just kind of shrugs. Valphalen slides on his other boot and hops down out of the... Uh, out of the uh, the wagon, he slides his blade into its scabbard and hoists his shield over his shoulders. I still find it rather troubling that I don't. I still have the gear that I had in the cabin. Is it the same for you all? Well, I'm not carrying the mirror with me, which I find to be most unusual because it was supposed to be cursed to be on me. That is interesting. Now, just now realizing that she has yet to check her bag, uh, Tess is going to panic and reach her hand into the bag to see if her mother's skull is still there. It is there. Whew. I should almost, I should almost be, you know what? I kind of will. Just do um, the uh, the prestidigitation and go, yes, I'm still here. <laughs> 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 Tess is gonna laugh and then reach out and, and lightly punch in Fear's shoulder, like in a in a oh you kind of fashion. You see Val kind of look over at Antarius briefly. Antarius, um, who has now moved to the front of the um of the line of, of horses and is um doing what he can to sort of, you know, calm one of the horses in the front, you see a huge two-handed sword strapped to his back, and Valphalen <sighs> breathes out a sigh. Smoke kind of, uh, a bit of smoke uh, sort of pillows from his nostrils. Everything okay, friend? Oh, um, yes. You do not typically smoke unless you are actually smoking. Did I smoke? Huh. Well, I, uh, the sword. He uh, gestures toward Antarius. It's special to me. Tess is confident you will have it again. Do not worry. It is, I, I believe, where it belongs now. I just intend that it stays there. Um, 
with that out of the way, let us be off, shall we? Everybody ready? Aye. Ready. Hmm. And Tess is going to start walking. You walk for a time, um, trees absolutely surrounding you, just kind of making your way through the very, very dense forest. Um, well, you walk for, um, let's say, 15 to 30 minutes, and you finally find a clearing. Tess, you almost navigate this thing just by memory alone, as if you've walked through this forest a thousand times. You know you've never actually been here before in your life. Um, in fact, it's very much different from the path that you took to reach the obelisk that you first encountered, the um, Gorgon. But as you approach the clearing and the obelisk, it does seem the same, um, albeit very many more trees <laughs> surrounding it. The door on the front of the obelisk, a mirror with a single handle. This almost it, feels like an out-of-body experience, she says as she approaches this mirror. Indeed. The same obelisk, but in a different location. Is that location mirrored from originally? Like, if it was, like, facing, like, north, would we be walking, like, south? Go ahead and roll a wisdom check for me. Okay. Because Tess is not great at geography. I'm gonna... Gonna be real here. Oh man, the dice love me today. You close your eyes momentarily and you take a moment to visualize the obelisk from the uh, your previous encounter and re remember clearly the mountains that gave the backdrop of this obelisk. When you open your eyes, you see the mountains, but they are much further in the distance, but on the same side. Not mirrored, but just in a different place, it seems. Hmm. As you open your eyes, you recall that the other obelisk had a plaque at the front door that bore the inscription that gave you the clue to opening the door. That plaque is not here. Hmm. No plaque this time. We should maybe circle around, see if we can find any means of. Let's try this one. That is a brilliant idea. While we search around, I need AFK for just a second. I'll be right back. What are you searching for? We're going to see if we can find um, basically sort of either if it's going to be I. Uh, if we can't find any sort of thing that would look similar to writing or uh, failing that, just like any sort of features that look like it might be, uh, whether it's something to like grab a hold of or like, you know, is just any anything that looks like a different feature from the previous obelisk. I'd like you to go ahead and roll a perception check for me. Anybody who's searching, go ahead and roll a perception check. Okay. I want to go ahead and say that um, this is the part where Tess kind of has her eyes closed. And Miss Goo, you rolled it private. <clears throat> I got an eight. Eight? Okay. I got a 15. 15. Okay. Sort of surveying the area. Um, and based on what you remember from the uh, from the other obelisk, this does seem like a different obelisk. Um, it may be constructed the same, um, but the lack of the plaque, the um, um, just the way that it it sort of has decayed over time, is just 
slightly different from the one that you approached previous. Uh, perhaps that is because this is a different obelisk, or perhaps that's because this is the same obelisk, but in a different point in time or something. I don't know. You've seen so much at this point. It's hard to really discern the nature of these things. Well, if, if it were the same obelisk at a different point in time, uh, if this were, say, if this looked to be more worn than the previous one, I think we would look to see if there were any, like, marks from where the plaque might have hung if it had hung on this one. Nothing. Doesn't look like there was ever a plaque on this one. <laughs> Okay, so it doesn't look like they ever marked on it. So it's more it's more likely that it's po that it is a different one in my opinion. So there's a door. There is. With a handle on it. Yep. Can I see if I can uh you know what? Let me see if I have detect magic. Uh, prepared. Okay. If I have detect magic, Let's see. Um, I do not have it prepared. Thanks for the sub, Psycon. Just and noticed. And in a row. And in a row. And in a row. Thirty-seven months. Wow. In a row? In a row? Hmm. Curious. Something seems different about this one. Uh, Tez, uh, before I, before I try to, uh, I guess take the time to detect magic, because I didn't have it prepared, so I would have to, uh, put some concentration into that. Uh, Tess is going to stare into the mirror and then reach her hand up and touch the glass just to see if it's a regular mirror. Indeed, your reflection. Um, you also notice this time the mirror is exactly just that. There is no inkling of you being able to see beyond it or anything like that. It actually reflects the forest perfectly, and your reflection reaches up and touches um, your own hand. She sighs. Welp, here it goes. And then she's going to reach out and try to open the doorknob. The doorknob turns and clicks. And the door slowly creaks open. Whew, for a moment there, Tess was expecting an explosion. Beyond the door... It is the very same staircase that you remember from before, leading down. Well, if you were expecting an explosion, I would have had to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, shall we? Shall we proceed? And Tessa will. I guess she'll be the first one to walk in. As you enter the door, Val turns to you in fear and says, Do you really believe that just by turning a doorknob you could invoke your wild magic? Well, we've seen it go off on the slightest things. That's why it's called wild. I see. Suddenly I feel very badly for the barmaid. <laughs> well, I mean, she had an explosion of a different kind. Are you sure she wasn't faking? Tess giggles as she like runs does... into runs down runs down the spiral or runs down the staircase real quick. Tess, I don't think you can fake an explosion. The spicy novels suggest otherwise. I still don't know what that means. <laughs> you continue down the staircase. And, well, 
let's uh stop this, shall we? Went to a very, very dark room at the bottom of the stairs. This is very loud. Why is everything so loud? Oh yes, because I reinstalled everything. That's that's right. <laughs> you would uh, enter a very dark room with two double doors in front of you. Tess leading the way, Mescu just behind. Um, you approach these doors. It is as before. In following with uh, recent actions, Tess is going to try to open the door right in front of her. Before we do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, Never no, mind. Go, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and open the door. Boop. Um, so are you just like opening it right up? No, she's like more so like creaking the door open and like leaning in to peek. Go ahead and roll a stealth check for me, if you please. Where's my stealth stealth? There we go. Oh, oh the punishment oh, from the you, nat 20 earlier. So you try to open up the door very carefully and the door goes like it's like rusted and, and groans open. Uh, As you do that, <laughs> a very large figure right in the center of the room, you see shift into position where it's looking directly at you, its eyes cold and dead. At this point, making direct eye contact with the creature and leaning in, Tess is going to smile and say, Hello! <laughs> Anyone calling? The creature starts to um, very slowly stomp toward the door. Tess is going to close the door. <laughs> <laughs> nope. We're going to go ahead and take a short break right here, and when we reconvene, I'd like everybody to roll in it.
I'm mad that I rolled a nat 20 off screen. That's <laughs> chat. <laughs> that. Let it be seen in the chat right here that there were two other nat 20s rolled. That is three nat 20s in this For one initiative. session. For On the other hand, there was also there was also two uh, nat ones rolled. Fair. Shush. <laughs> Miss Goo, if I could get you and the stone golem here to roll initiative. Go ahead and do that. Oh, rolled privately again. That's okay. It picked up. I see a nine. All right. Let's go ahead and begin the combat session. So before we start that, after uh, closing the door quickly and turning around to face the entire party, Tess says... There may or may not be a very large scary monster coming at us right now. Oh, so it's business as usual. Business as usual. I, this may be a bad time to I mention this, but I cannot see. Oh. Why didn't you say something before? We could have fixed this. <laughs> well, um... Things were happening so quickly, and I was still thinking about the explosion from earlier, and how one can, how the barmaid could have manifested an explosion and faked it. It takes all kinds, man. It just takes all kinds. You'll understand it when you're older. <sighs> That's what the monks used to tell me at the monastery. Wait, <laughs> I think I'm understanding the spicy gnaw. And as soon as he says that, you hear a <laughs> coming from inside the fucking um, the the next room. Oh right, we got this thing to worry about. Balthalen draws out his weapon. Still no visuals. <laughs> Ian Fear, you're up. All right. Well, <clears throat> um, trying to see what I even have in here. Well, at least uh, I'm carrying a torch that I can use, so we'll start with that. Okay, you're lighting up a torch? Yeah. Okay, give me one moment here. How did I do that again? Ah, oh, yes. Ha 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 ha. Fireball. No, wait. Do, 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 do. There we go. Uh, and I'll turn to uh, and uh, to Valfane and say, "There, should that be better for you?" Much, I appreciate it. All right. Uh, so Valfane's, it looks. Uh, blade and his shield kind of flicker in the uh, in the light. So it looks like there's two doors here. That's correct. It is a double door. All right. Did not open that door yet. Well. It's either it's either we open the door to try to get through and Hess, give ourselves some more space. Hess or... just needs a moment, and she's, like, currently pulling out a piece of parchment and writing on it, but I need us to get through the initiatives so I can get to my turn. If you're sure, it's just... But it will limit the amount of uh, movement we can have to deal with the creature in case things go wrong. Oh, we will get there. Just wait. Wait for Tess's call out, please. All right, I will, I will stand by the door then, um, and in case, um, Infir is going to, uh, ready, uh, the, uh, he's gonna ready, uh, uh, an action so that, uh, 
or I, well, I want to try to prepare so that if the door opens, uh, Ian Fear can use Misty Step to get behind the creature. Understood. Okay, so on Tess's side, when she opens the door, she wants Val to run through that door in particular. Like, so if, if when Tess opens up her door, we send Val through that door, and that will create a distraction for Ian Fear to do the Misty Step. I was step. about to offer that exact thing. Um, but again, I need to get to my turn so I can buff Val to get in there. Uh, then I will... I will wait for your signal. Okay, so Ian Fury passing your turn. Uh, Val yeah. Balin uh, is also. I will wait for your signal. Let me know when you're ready. And I'll dash through the door as at your request. Yeah, I believe it's, I believe it's Miscu, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and activate rage while I wait. Uh, Misku is. Hey Misku. In... Oh, what do you do to rage? How do you invoke your rage? I was just about to say that actually. Uh, Misku just kind of starts like, like slapping herself in the face, like left, right, left, right, and getting pumped up. Oh hell yeah. And then you just hear a growl, ready. And that's my turn. I know I know this is the frightened one, but I just think it, it's appropriate. <laughs> just because of the open mouth and stuff. So that, that for now is going to be rage. People who chew loudly make Misku rage. Uh, Misku, I think it would be best if we both engage the monster head on. Misku nods and she'll rush in after you. Uh, Tess, exactly how large is this thing? Mm, bigger than Tess. Very well. He sort of, you see him like kind of ready his shield arm and he, he kind of thrusts his shield forward and brings his blade back. <clears throat> Gets ready to take off down the hall. On your signal. Tess is going to cast Shield of Faith on Val Phelan. Uh, really quick. You hear yet another <laughs> come from outside, and it's like everything is like vibrating around you. It's almost hard to keep your footing, but uh, but not it's not like earthquake levels, um, but you definitely feel it in your feet. It's very close. So after right, after slapping this uh after slapping this parchment on Val Phelan, um which gives a, a plus two bonus to AC for the ten minute duration, by the way, as long as Tess is concentrating on Val. So she's uh on my count. Three, two, one, and we both open the doors. Boop. Okay, one moment. I'm putting down. Step out of the way. Putting down the shield real quick. There we go. Holy shield. So now Val is buffed, and he can uh, rush in and create a distraction if he can. Okay. First off, actually, uh, Ian Fear, you were also holding an action. What is it? Uh, it was. Uh, I'm gonna cast Misty Step in order to try to get uh, behind the creature. Go ahead and cast. 15, okay, uh, and then this is second level spell, so. So go ahead and roll a um, wild magic. Wild magic surge, yes. Remember, we are now rolling with 1d20 plus your spell level. And if uh, the roll is higher than your spell save DC, then wild magic occurs. Uh, so that'd be 18. It'd be an 18. And what is your spell save DC? 16. <laughs> Go ahead and roll your wild magic surge. All right. Oh, God. <laughs> he just casted something on himself. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, 11. 11. Let me check that table. Okay. Oh. <laughs> oh no. I didn't like the sound of that. Oh god, roll a d10. Yeah. <laughs> I... <laughs> I I shrink an inch. You shrink an inch. <laughs> 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 Ah, weird. My perspective just changed a little bit. Um, <laughs> we must focus on the task at hand. In fear, what? And the funny thing is, is this is not temporary. This is permanent. <laughs> Jesus. Right, go, go, just go, just go. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so Val, um, let me see who was, who was first in the order. Val Phelan's going to go ahead and rush forward, um, and start engaging with the, uh, the momster. Uh, let me see what he's going to do here. Um... He's actually going to go ahead and open by uh, this kind of leaping forward and slashing with his blade. Well, <laughs> I forgot how that worked. Don't don't hate me. We have an eighteen. So that is a hit. All right, so you all watch as Val Phelan um, sort of leaps forward, a blade drawn, shield um, shield kind of in the primary, and he slashes forth at this um, uh, at, at this creature, and immediately you hear, you hear this loud and echoing ting as the sword just kind of like stops and like ricochets back you see his arm kind of flail backward and he's sort of surprised by this and and lands on both feet kind of slides back a little bit and goes that oh, my attack seemed ineffectual that did not sound good uh so let me see this is a uh, my ceiling All right, Misku, you're up next. Hi, uh, Misku, you're muted. Misku's going to dash into the room very low to the ground. She's going to stop right in front of the golem and spin out to the side and start hammering away at the back of its knees. Okay, go ahead and roll it. Why is it rolling privately? Uh, so the, the in the chat Ch window um, thing, yeah, it actually just oh, above the go. chat window. Yeah, there you go. Perfect, perfect. <clears throat> then, uh, what was your attack roll? Oh, I see it now. Uh, so we have a twelve. No, that's that... uh... yeah. I see Warhammer plus two attack roll. It says twelve. Huh. Oh, was okay. It not I a see. Twelve miscue. Yes. Okay, uh, so a 12, you actually, um, so you swing at it, you fully connect, but it just feels like you have swung at a wall. It goes like, thud, and it does not follow through. There's no, there's no buckle, nothing. Like, it, it vibrates and down your arms, and you feel like you have just struck dead weight. Miscu's, nothing happens. Misku's eyes get wide, uh, surprised, and then she bites her lip in concentration, and keeps swinging away. 
Go ahead and roll it. It's still rolling private. Hmm. I don't know why it's doing this. Oh, there we go. It's an 18. 18? Uh, go ahead and roll damage. Wow. It's still rolling private. Make sure when before you do the roll that you have the default roll mode um, that's in oh, the little wait. drop down above there it set to public. Yeah, I got it now. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So once again, you swing. This time you feel a much stronger connection um, occur. Uh, however, it still sends those vibrations right up your arm uh, as though you've hit a wall. Um, you hear sort of like a, a crunching kind of noise <laughs> as as it like digs into the stone, like solid stone. Um, this is going to take a lot more than brute strength just to get through. Um, but you do feel like you're able to damage it ever so slightly. Misk is going to wince at the impact and try and follow through for one more attack. Go for it. Well... Never. This time, the uh, the golem picks up its leg to take another step forward, just unforgivingly, and you just kind of whiff right under his leg. Um, uh, this big ass thing kind of cycles around to look directly at you, and uh, the you look up into its face, and its eyes are just completely dead looking, no no emotion whatsoever. Uh, but it's staring directly at you, Miskew. Misku is going to spit to the side from frustration. And that's my turn. Okay. Tess, did you have any other actions before the end of your turn? Yeah, this, remember, all of this was reactionary because we were all preparing actions. Oh, okay. Um, staring at the creature, just trying to understand the details of what I'm seeing here. Um, can you, can you give like, a full body explanation of what this character. I understand that it has dead looking eyes, but is it made of stone? It is, is a it... fully it is a fully stone statue. Um it is uh it is of humanoid form and it kind of very slowly lumbers as if um uh as if time almost moves slowly around it. You almost feel yourself kind of swayed by that slow movement to um to kind of slow down yourself but it um it sort of like lumbers around and very slowly looks around um uh, now is completely focused on miscu very tall humanoid form but it's completely made of stone completely made of stone correct Okay, hang on real quick. No. I don't think my plan would work. Hmm. Being made of stone, but also having dead eyes. So this round, um, since we haven't done any real damage to it, I don't see it as being a harm, but Tess is going to attempt to uh, cure wounds on the enemy creature. To be clear, the, the whole like dead eyes thing that I'm talking about is the emotionless state of being a yeah. statue. Yeah, because yeah, it's a statue but, um, doesn't have any expression. Yeah. Correct. Does anybody have the ability to create water or to spawn water up at all? Well, I've got a little something that I'm going to be uh, preparing for next turn. What, Are you what's your that in character? Uh, what's uh, your plan? Um, no. Well, uh, let's just say it's a little something I've been uh, wanting to try out for a while since hitting this level. Okay. I do have a water skin. But uh, as far as water stuff, I have uh, frost. I can cast frostbite. 
My blade barely Frost. put a ding in it. I'm not really sure what you intend to do with the water skin, Misku. <laughs> uh, well, if there is water inside that water skin and Tess has holy water, we could uh, pour the water out and control the water to attack the creature made of stone. Uh, I see. Worth a shot. But if anyone else has any ideas... Oh, I got something you guys might find interesting. So in that case, um, Tess is just probably going to spend this turn concentrating on uh, keeping the buff active on Valphalen because it does require concentration. Okay. Ian Fear, you're up. So uh, Ian Fear is going to sort of focus on the creature uh, more directly on a spot behind it. And then he's going to sort of like, you're going to see the eyes glow and his hair is also going to sort of like go extra shiny with the sparkles. Okay. As Ian Fear is going to cast Vitriolic Sphere. All right. Uh, we'll put it right here. Oh. So it must make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> Saving throw from the... Oh, well, first... Hang on. So this would be a roll of 10 versus my DC of 16. Wait, what? For wild magic. Because this is oh, a spell... Yeah. This is level 4 spell. So the the you uh, you begin to wave your hands and the um and and you sort of close your eyes and you just you feel that that click like that eureka moment that you that you usually feel that one that you're always always just striving for and when you open your eyes your vitriolic sphere has completely manifested and is and is just whirling within your hands and you haul back and you just hurl this thing through the air and it just you watch as this, this golem sort of slowly watches it fly over its shoulder and boom, spreads into this huge pile of, of acid uh, all over the floor. Uh, the golem, slow to its reactions, um, attempts to sidestep and completely fails, sliding backward uh, about five feet toward the center. Um, it starts to sort of trudge into this acid. You see its feet sort of melting and the acid sort of oozing up its legs. Um, it makes this kind of like groaning sort of um, noise. It sounds kind of like stone grinding and, and um, you're not otherwise not sure where this echoing sort of noise is coming from as it trudges backward. All right, so, and it will take... 39 acid damage. Nice. <laughs> okay. And then I'll look towards uh, Valphalen and Misku and say, watch your footing around there. That is not something to mess with. Valphalen sort of steps back a bit as the uh, as the the puddle of this acid sort of kind of creeps up next to his feet. <laughs> Close one. Uh, it seems like your plan worked. Magic seems to be more effective than our physical attacks. I'm at a loss for options. When did you learn that one? Let's just say I've been uh, I've been uh, picking up a thing or two during our travels. Oh, neat. 
Misku, I see you. Oh, nope, you can ignore that. Sorry. Okay. That uh, was a Misku misclick. Oop. Hmm. Not many options here. Now, failing sort of, you see him kind of squinting, looking into the uh, into the darkness, and he takes a uh, a couple of steps over. How do I? Can I throw this? I feel like I should be able to throw it. Um, oh wait, you know what? I know exactly what this is. Phelan sort of hurls this hand axe in the direction of the um, of the um, the figure, uh, but you kind of hear it go thum, 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 tink, and it just like hits the wall, and you hear it like clang, clang, clang against the ground. Well, it was worth a shot, I suppose. Uh, let me see. Any other actions I can do here? Okay, second attack. Ah, okay. Hey, why will it, why will it not let me move this? There's a, there was a thing under my spell where it let you put the. Uh... Hold on, it should it should let me move this? Bro, you're breathing on me. Yeah, it's not supposed to. Can I? Okay, can I destroy that? <laughs> it's supposed to be. Is there a way to rotate it? That's very. That's problematic. <laughs> Well, it's it's supposed to be a cone in front of him that's supposed to face at the monster, but for some reason it's not letting me rotate it. I'll have to figure that out a little bit later. That's a that's new. I didn't see that happen before. Uh, but essentially, he's he's breathing out a cone of flame uh, just in front of him. Let me go ahead and roll the damage on that because oh, that is a uh, DC 15 dexterity. So oh, DC 15 dexterity saving throw. Rolled an 11, which is a fail. I'm gonna go ahead and roll the damage on that. All right, for 14 damage. Cool. All right, so you see Val Phelan, um take this huge breath, and from his nostrils, smoke begins to pour as he breathes, and flame just kind of pours from his mouth in a cone in front of him, uh, engulfing the the lower half of this statue, who leans back um, against the flame and sort of starts to brush uh, its legs. the the stone The stone kind of heating up, and as he brushes the um, there are like chars of this stone just kind of falling off his legs. Uh, his legs begin to buckle underneath the um, underneath both the acid that's kind of corroded his um, uh, his lower uh, half of his body, as well as the the flame, which is now starting to kind of crumble away at the rest of the stone. Misku, you're up next. So we see his legs are getting crumbly. Yeah, his legs seem to be seem to be getting a little bit weaker. Um, still, he's got he's very stocky. So Misku is going to cast her club to the ground temporarily. Uh, she's going to reach to a small but a um, a long bundle behind her back and unfurl it to reveal a bandolier of javelins. I've been waiting to use these for so long. <laughs> And Miss right. Goo's gonna start chucking javelins. All right, go ahead and roll your attack. 
16, you haul back and you hurl that first javelin. And um, as you do, the, the statue kind of like leans over to one side and you just hear the ping, ding, ding, ding. You hear it kind of like hit the ground and um, uh, or hit the wall and then hit the ground behind it. A miss. Wow. Misk is going to shout out in frustration. Ah, just keep throwing. She's going to throw two more. Okay, go ahead. Ooh, a 23. You uh, you hurl your second javelin and it strikes it. Bam, sm um, directly. Where are you aiming? Firstly? I'm, I'm aiming for the knees where it's crumbling at. You aim, you, you hit it directly in one of its knees um, and it, um, it strikes it. You hear a little bit of a but it doesn't seem to do terribly much. Um, you see, and um, you see maybe a small stone fall off one of the knees. What's your next move? Uh, I'm going to throw one more. Okay. Ooh. Ooh. This time you throw the javelin. It feels like you just didn't get a really solid throw on this. It hits the knee, but nothing happens. All right, I'll stand there clutching my final javelin and end my turn. Oh, and uh, by the way, as the javelin hits the, uh, hits the acid, it just kind of like <sighs> and like fades into nothing. <sighs> kind of evaporates. My javelin. Rip. The stone mm -hmm. golem affixes its gaze onto Misku. Takes a step very slowly forward in the acid, and it's going to roll a an attack here. One moment, please. All right, that is a 14. Is that a hit? Looks like it is. Yes. All right. This will be 3d8 bludgeoning. I believe you have resistance against bludgeoning damage. Is that correct? Yes. All right. The uh, golem hauls back and it just slams its fist into you. Um, uh, so as you're uh, as you're kind of hauled back with your with your final javelin, it just kind of slams into your chest and you you uh, slide back a few feet. Uh, 22 damage on that one. I can go ahead and put that in. Oh, I got it. Oh, you got it? Oh. There we go. All right, one more attack from the... Oof, 28. That is a hit. <laughs> With its other fist, it swings around from the other side and connects with your side. Um, you just feel this like pain as as you feel kind of some of the ribs in your um, uh, in your rib cage just kind of crunch um, against the stone, and that's eleven damage. You all see Misku kind of. Um, Kind of wait, clutch wait, at her is, side. Oh, go ahead. Is, is that with my resistance? Oh, I'm sorry. That's yeah. I'm I'm sorry about that. I totally forgot. Uh, so that no would worries. be. Uh, um, let's see. The first Six? one would have been. Uh, hold on. So the first one would have been plus eleven. Second one would have been. That would have been plus six. Yeah. 
So Miskew just absolutely shoulders it like no problem. <laughs> uh, no, it, it does. It does wound Miskew a little bit. Um, like I said, you feel that the crunch of your ribs as it hits you the second time uh, in your torso and you sort of buckle over and uh, clutching at that rib. But you're like, mm, OK, I can muscle through this. I've had worse. Yeah, Miskew is putting on a brave face, but her body is showing. Worse for yeah, that, that fucking hurt. <laughs> Tess, you're up. Uh, before Tess's turn, since the creature ends its turn in the acid, it will now take 5d4 acid damage. 5d4 acid damage. Uh, let me go ahead and roll that. Yeah, boy. So we have 14 damage. You're really starting to see the legs of this uh, of this stone golem become weak uh, as the acid continues to travel up its body and, and sort of corrode everything. Um, uh, the the center, uh, sort of the torso of its body starts to um, starts to crumble away un underneath the acid. Uh, and I believe that's all the acid is able to do right before it dissipates. Yeah. So now so now at the after the end of its turn, it starts to dissipate. OK. Tess, you're up. Uh, this is going to break her concentration from the uh, shield of faith that was placed on Val. But we're going to go with a ye old cantrip of uh, Toll the Dead. Ah. You good? I don't remember what the initiative value was for him nine eight i don't remember i think it was like 20 something because i rolled a i rolled like a so a val got a 21 i got a 22 okay cool that's what i thought it was yeah i did that wrong okay sorry that's okay, what i meant so, to do go ahead go um, ahead Tess. so the target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or in this case, since they're missing hit points, they would take 1d12 necrotic damage. Wisdom saving throw. Let me double check it real quick. Out of a DC 14, it fails. So go ahead and roll damage on that. All right, so that would be the 1d12. Yep. Do I have to type it in, 1d12? Uh, uh, click, on, click on the damage button on that Toll the Dead. Yeah, I did, but I want to make sure it's rolling the 1d12. Huh, I think, that's weird. I, th I think I have to maybe type in 1d12. Yeah, for now, just go ahead and roll 1d12, or type in 1d12. We'll fix that later. Okay. That's weird. All right, so we've got a 21 damage. Hmm. Oh, oh I think it did it twice. No. Okay, so it did do it. Let me re-roll that, if I can, just, like, yep. trusting it. Go ahead and re-roll. There we go, I think. So the D12 was three? Looks like. Because it looked like the D8 was seven. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me let me do that it one more. It rolled th both of them at the same time. Yeah, it oh. rolled both D D12s. Let's go ahead and roll that one well, last it, time. It Sorry. does say it does say the spell's damage increases by one die when you reach fifth level. Uh, oh, I see. But it rolled two d8s, is what it looks like. Yeah, why is it rolling the one d8? Okay, let me let me do that. Okay. That's that's really weird, and it should be a plus two. It looks like so. So roll. it's two d12, two and then d12. plus two. D12 plus two. There we go. Okay, so we've got eleven damage. Also going for the legs where it's currently crumbling to see if we can at least knock it over.
Yeah, there's uh, so this this uh, sound of just a bell fills the air, and the, you all feel sort of the vibrations filling the room, and the uh, the um, uh, the the uh, big statue kind of uh, vibrates with it, and you see like rock just crumbling off of its torso and onto the ground, um, particularly in the legs, um, weakening even further. All right, Ian Fear, you're up. Okay. Uh, I'm going to see if it's possible to move around side him without provoking an attack. Okay. Around, like, say, to try to get around behind him. Yeah, you're able to. You're able to move in. It's when you move away from, like, out of their. So it's when you move out of their range, um, like if you're trying to flee without using a disengage, that they're able to take an attack of opportunity on you. All right. Uh, I would like to try to use my dagger to try to strike at its knee okay uh how are you using your dagger are you going to throw it are you going to just to stab, stab with it okay uh well. let me see here because you isn't this dagger doesn't this dagger automatically return to you no, I'm that. So I have two of them. One is the magic dagger plus two, and then the one that's the plus one is the one that has the uh, the dagger. If I throw it, it can return to me. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna, but I'm using the other one, the uh, the dagger with the plus two. Okay. So you're just gonna take a nice little, nice big slash at it. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, let's see. And Go ahead and roll it. Give me a sec. If you have click the attack thing in the chat. Yeah, no, I'm uh there's something I'm looking at real quick. Okay. Uh I'm gonna use uh Tides of Chaos, so I will give myself advantage on this. Okay. Let me uh link this in chat real quick. Hang on, that's why. Oh, I see. I see. There we go. Okay. Your uh, your voice changed. There we go. That should be better. All right. Yep. Go ahead. Okay, and then with advantage. That's a nineteen. Nineteen. Um. See so you come forward and you make this huge stabbing motion at the um at the leg of the uh of the uh golem and and your knife just kind of sticks right between these these this crack in the stone your dagger becomes jammed and you start to yank on it as hard as you can but you can't seem to pull it out hmm some of the okay. uh some of the dust from within that crack uh sort of um, spills down to the floor, almost like blood. Uh, okay. You feel the, uh, you feel, um, you feel there's a sort of give to it, but there, but that dagger is just stuck fast as you, as you grip and you continue to kind of yank against it, trying to dislodge it. Uh... All Anything right. else you uh, have here? I yes. Now I'm just trying to check to see if it dealt any damage to it. It did. Um, like I said, you you feel a little bit of the stone kind of, or you, or you see a little bit of the stone kind of um, powder down to the floor, almost like blood. Give me a sec. The reason I ask is 
Oh, never mind. I'm reading this thing wrong. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so other than that, um, uh, I, I think uh, Aim Fear will sort of just call to Misku and say, if you get over here, I've got something that might be worth clubbing into his uh, leg. Are you keeping your grip on the dagger or are you letting it go? I'll let it go. Okay. So Ian Fear leaves his dagger stuck in the uh, in the leg of this um, of this giant. And then um, I think that will be my turn. Valphalen calls out, Misku, aim for the dagger. Got it. Valphalen's also going to, um, <laughs> so Valphalen's going to try to shield bash uh, this thing. Well, if he can actually, how would I execute a shield bash? Oh, I didn't even roll the damage on the dagger either. Yes, you did. Oh, wait. No, that no, was didn't. the, that was oh, the no, attack. No, no. It, it's pre -cal I, I pre-calculated um, simply okay. because of, yeah, we're fine. On the six plus strength modifier. Okay. Simple melee. So we have one D one D six plus strength. So I'm gonna go ahead and roll one D six. So there's my one D six. We're gonna do four. Oh wait, I'm sorry. That's that's damage. What am I thinking here? Uh, so I'm just gonna roll a basic attack. That's going to be roll one D twenty. We're going to add the strength modifier, which is plus four, which brings us up to 17. Um, so Valphalen sort of takes that first um, step forward um, toward the leg of the uh, of the golem. He swings his shield out, but just barely misses that dagger. Uh, we're going to try and what, roll that one more time for a second attack. This one, it does connect with the... Uh, with the dagger, um, you hear it hit that dagger and, and just kind of drive it a little bit deeper within. So we're going to go ahead and roll 1d6 plus the strength modifier of Alphalen. Uh His hit does come up a little bit short. But Ian fears you watch more of that sort of powdery rock and and rubble and 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 cobble just kind of like scatters onto the floor like blood it's working misku aim for the dagger misku you're up all right misku's gonna dash into position and i will use Where is it? There we go. It's gonna be reckless attack. So I will have advantage on the roll, but strength checks against me will have advantage. All right. And we're gonna smash. Go ahead and roll it. Ooh. So you swing that first time and you barely miss that dagger. It nails him kind of right in the knee and, and he doesn't seem to be uh, staggered or anything. Undeterred, Just misses that dagger though. Undeterred miss will keep hammering away. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh. I'm gonna... Oh, we have gonna, inspiration, right? Yeah, I'm gonna inspiration. Dice jail, dice Excellent. jail. Uh, I think I'm going to use uh... you. Uh, that's a hit. Hmm, okay. Yeah, that's a hit. So you you swing with all of your might. You nail this. Um, um, uh, you absolutely nail this uh, this dagger in his knee, and you you feel it kind of buckle into his knee a little bit more. Go ahead and roll uh, damage. Oof. And 
once more. All right, one more time. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to use two sorcery points to use my Ben Luck skill. So okay. uh, you can add a d4 to that. Go ahead. Are you rolling the uh, 1d4? Yeah, or hang you on a sec. Your voice changed again. All right. Hang on. So that adds four to that attack. Oh, nice. That is a hit. So, Misku, as you haul back with that uh, and prepare your next swing, um, Ian Fear sort of, uh, Ian Fear um, waves his hand momentarily in the uh, uh, the head of your um, of your um, <laughs> uh, of your club starts to sort of feel um, almost lighter in in your in your hand, but at the same time sturdier. And you swing as hard as you can and connect directly with that dagger. Go ahead and roll damage. Eight. Nice. The leg of this creature um, starts to buckle. The dagger <laughs> comes out the other side. Ting, ting, ting. Fly, um, kind of slides across the floor uh, with a. <laughs> um, the uh, the leg starts to kind of just fall apart. Rock and dust and cobble just sort of collapsing down on the floor like blood as the monster tips over on its side. Um, uh, on its like half leg and then crumples down to the floor um it swings its uh its leg very widely all three of you kind of duck as that leg just barely misses you coming overhead all right we're down to the stone golem here Let's see what he does next so he is prone just going to put that on there for now so I don't have to dig through all of that. So he is going to attempt to, let me see. The stone golem sort of rolls to, um, to make eye contact uh, with each of you. What the hell? Why why is that not working? Why is that not working? Oh, foundry. Yeah, it's not working. Let me try that. Okay, that'll that'll do it. All right, so he is going to uh target the three of us uh that are nearby him. Uh, with this, um, so essentially what happens is as he has crumpled down to the floor, he's moving very slowly, and he looks at uh, at all three of us who are um, uh, Val Phelan, uh, Misku, and Ian Fear, and uh, you start to feel your bodies, they feel like heavy and unable to move as quickly as, as you could before, um, so... Let me see here. So go ahead and roll uh, wisdom saving throws for me. With a 19 from Ian Fear. Ooh. 19 from Misku. Smart. Misku smart. Scary stone statue, don't scare me. Okay. Misku as well. Okay, let me go ahead and do the same thing for Val Phelan here. Oof. I think I can only use this once a turn, right? Yeah. So Valphalen also Valphalen also starts to sort of slow down 
Oh. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Next up, we have Tess. Go ahead. Okay, uh, she's going to take a step forward. Forgot to change my tool here because I was measuring things. And uh, we're going to go for... a third level spell here aid it says uh choose up to three creatures within range and all three of you are in range so you should get buffed with this uh resolve increase by 5 for the duration so are you giving everybody 5 hit points yeah, five extra. That's so... Okay, hold on. Bolstering you guys with toughness and resolve. Build with determination. Yeah. <laughs> How the hell do I do that? So the first part of hit point. Your, uh, <laughs> your, uh, yeah, your... The first part of your hit points is temporary. Yeah, it's not letting me do it. Oh, okay. I think I see. I'm just so used to using the number pad for everything. Yeah, I'm I'm losing. I'm not. Okay. I think I think it's working. Okay, I think I got it. Perfect. All right. Anything else? I'm not quite sure how to look at my bonus actions here. I guess it's just uh, so, anything that I can use here. If you, let me see, features. Uh, actually, so if you look under inventory, you can see one that has action, and then you can click bonus action, and that'll show you uh, same, which action you thing, have. Or bonus. Same thing on features or spell book. You can also yep. click on the bonus action category, and it will, okay. show, it will filter it down to just your bonus actions. Okay. Um... Do, 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 do. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't think I have any other actions here. <laughs> okay. All right. Ian Fear, you're up. So how is this golem looking? Oh, he looks pretty messed up. Uh, I would say he is at... He is seriously wounded. Okay. Uh... I mean, he's on the floor. He can't like move. Like he can't like get up anymore. He's only got a. He's got one leg. Uh, I'm gonna kind of get try to get a little bit of distance away from him. So, <laughs> let me see if I can get to. All right. Uh, about right here. Since he's prone, it does not provoke an attack of opportunity. All right. And then uh, I'm going to use my uh, chaos bolt. And I'm actually going to... Let me see. Okay. Uh, each take, uh, I'm going to roll... Uh, I'm uh, I'm gonna roll this uh, up to uh, I'm gonna roll this up to third level. Okay. Chaos bolt, chaotic energy. 
Uh, so first I make a ranged spell attack against the target. Uh, okay, go ahead. Uh... Oh, that's what I was going to try to do. Okay, I probably should have tried to move a little further down. Oh, well. Uh, so that's a 24. Hit. Okay. And then, so this is going to take, uh, let me see, if you roll the same number on both D8s, what's both D8? On a hit, target takes 2D8 plus 1D6 damage. It's one of the D8s. Okay. Uh, so I had a four, five, and two on my D eights. It looks no D sixes. What did I get on the D eights? Yeah, what was your what was the damage type? That's that's the thing is it, I choose one of the oh. D eights. Yeah. Okay. So I need to see. Um, I need to see what the actual roll was. Oh, I wish it would have shown you that. Uh, it looks like it even has a spot to like show you what those were. Um, I'll tell you what. Why don't you go ahead and roll two d eight real quick, and we'll just we'll use that. Okay. Maybe roll them each one at a time. Uh, I see eleven. A five so and five a and a six. I think so. Yeah, it's kind of hard right. to tell with your dice. Uh, so we'll make this um, oh, 5 and 6. We'll make this. Uh, we'll make this lightning damage. All right. Hey. All right, you got lightning damage. We have 24 damage incoming. This orb of lightning um, connects with the uh, with the stone golem who's laid out on the floor. Uh, it hits him right in the side of his arm, which starts to crumble away. Um, now he's like got a messed up arm and like his legs completely shaved off. And then uh, I'll look to the other and say, I think we've got it nearly taken down. We just need to keep at this. I'd say it's at death's door, yeah. And that is my turn. Quick question. Yes? So the golem's considered prone right now, right? Correct. Okay, so if we hit him with melee, we should be swinging with advantage? That is correct. E. Okay. <laughs> but remember, it seems like physical attacks are kind of ineffectual. Yeah, the thing was, is I was trying to see if it was possible to be sort of, because as a thief, I would have the potential for a, uh, for a sneak attack with ranged attacks. Um, oh, well, I mean, you can, yes, you can sneak attack with a ranged attack. Well, I mean, it, it depends on the wording of sneak attack, I think. It says if you hit with, uh, uh a finesse or ranged weapon if you have advantage on the attack roll uh you don't need advantage on the attack roll if another enemy is with it is that enemy isn't incapacitated and you don't have a disadvantage on the attack roll i don't know that's something to look thing about for later <coughs> so i think it should be val's turn now yep uh let me see that's not gonna work No, that's none of that's really gonna work. Okay, know exactly what I'm gonna do here. Valfalen once more takes a very oh really? I wish it showed that. Like, where can I see that? 
Well, I mean, if it says I don't have it left, then I guess I don't. Oh, yeah, it is once per short. Okay. Uh, well, I guess Val Phelan's just going to take an attack. Uh, so at this point, Val Phelan kind of reaches around and he stows his shield um, behind him uh, ever so slowly. Um, he takes his blade in both hands and he's going to go ahead and make an attack with that. It's going to be... Yeah, okay. It's the same attack. Bam, hit. Okay, and this is a... And we have a 14 damage. All right, he swings and he slices into the uh, into the already damaged leg of this um, of this monster. Um, he breaks off just a little bit more of the stone, um, but it, again, his attack seems pretty ineffectual. Being slowed, he's not able to take any other actions uh, this turn. So, Misku, you're up. All right. Misku's going to raise her club up and just start murder chopping at that leg. Okay, go ahead and roll it. With advantage, of course. Hit. Go ahead and roll it. We'll talk about what happens afterward. Hit. Ooh, nice. And last one. Ooh. Natural 20. Damn, Ooh. our fourth yeah. our fourth nat 20 for this session. Damn. You just pound and pound and pound into that into that already broken leg. This thing like groans with the like rocky kind of sound that it's been making this whole time, but the stone just kind of like falls and 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 rubbles away from its leg um, as you kind of like just chip away at this stone all the way up to its torso. Like this, his leg is completely devastated at this point. Like he has no like hamstring or or or, or, or um uh, what is it calf or whatever he has like absolutely no leg remaining there it is just one leg that he has everything else is like completely turned to dust uh yeah he he looks bad like he's he's starting to move very very slowly um but he's actually going to uh miss mommy goes bump bonk my fuck Did it work? Oh, okay. He's going to take a retaliatory swing at you. Is 16 a hit? Yes. That is a disadvantage roll. Wow. So as you're swinging into this leg, um, he, uh, the, the statue picks up their other leg and just kind of swings it at you. And, uh, in your rage you don't really notice it coming and it kind of connects with your side the same exact side where you, where it just hit you those last two times absolutely nails you in this you kind of wince in pain um as it sweeps you across and away from it for 22 damage uh minus half which is 11 damage i got that so you see misku kind of slide back about five feet and kind of crumple over in pain ah, wincing 
Miss Goose doubled over, clutching her stomach, but then shakingly turns her head up towards it and waves with a free hand going, come on. That's Valfalen, so badass. Valfalen huffing, shield kind of drawn forward. Miss Goo, are you okay? Miss Goo? Don't worry about me. We've almost got this. <clears throat> he prepares for another charge. Tass, you're up. Hoping that this will be the uh, the last bit of damage that we need. I'm going to uh, go for another uh, Toll the Dead. Toll the Dead. Go ahead and roll it. Uh, it's got a seat oh, on a, a wisdom right. saving roll. Wisdom saving throw first. Yep. Wisdom saving throw. Oh, that is a fail. Go ahead and roll it. Am I supposed to choose critical hit or normal on this um, one? Since they're prone. The prone. Go ahead and do critical. Let's see what happens when you do critical. Yeah, but it, yeah, the thing is, is, is it rolls d8s, remember? So yeah, it'll have fucking... to be... You know what? We're fucking Four keeping it. DM's call on this one. 22 sure. fucking damage. You you hear this like boom of a bell toll and like the entire room once again starts to vibrate with the sound and this uh, this humongous like golem just kind of crumbles into fucking dust. That's combat. Tess is immediately going to walk up and she's going to collect some of that dust and put it inside of one of her many vials. That is the worst trip to getting stoned I've ever had taken. <sighs> I'm okay. What a very interesting creature. Valfalen sort of slowly stows his weapon. I feel so tired. Infir is going to go around and go to pick up his dagger from the ground. Miss dagger gonna, seems... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Miss going to throw her club over her shoulders and kind of drape her arms over the top and walk up to the golem and kind of push at its head with her foot. The, uh, as you do that, the head rolls and as it rolls it like crumples and dusts out into kind of a long string of like just rubble um so it kind of like falls apart as it rolls rest in pieces big guy <laughs> appropriate <laughs> your uh your ribs are just absolutely devastated they hurt so bad Misk is going to go ahead and take a sit. Tess, a door at the back of the room seems to just kind of call to you. After collecting some of the uh, golem dust, Tess is going to look up and stare at the door. We should take some time to rest before we move on. And I guess we'll go ahead and end right there. Um, so everybody who tuned in, thank you for tuning in. Uh, we will see you all next time. Bye. Later.